check aid services to small business, real estate, and ag lending. We're here for you, your community, your bank, Midwest Bank. Find out more at MidwestBank.com. Member FDIC. Whether you like fishing together or fishing to get away, for the thrill of reeling in a big one, or just going out to have a good time, on the banks of your local pond, at a bend in a river, or on one of our many lakes and reservoirs, you'll always find the perfect place to cast a line. Here, beneath Nebraska skies. Start planning your next fishing adventure today at letsfishnebraska.com. Sponsored by Nebraska Game and Parks. Aired with the Nebraska Broadcasters Association and this station. Old School with DP and Jay. So I knew that it was a crapshoot with the grown-up professional at the highest level. Who's going to bet? I don't know whether the starting center's girlfriend broke up with him, whether his parents have, have groceries that week. I don't know whether his roommate and him had a fight. So why would I, one, why would I want to bet on that? Uh, 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. This is On the Block with Stricken Austin. Nebraska Basketball Hall of Famer and nine-year NBA vet, Eric Strickland. Strickland for three! And you're going to go out of here at the Big Eight Tournament Champion. Middle school basketball coaching legend and Duke basketball shooting coach in his mind, Austin Orman. Coming at you live from the heart of Lincoln, America, on air and online at theticketfm.com. Presented by Nipco. This is On the Block with Strick and Austin. Welcome in, welcome in, welcome in to a Tuesday show brought to you by Nebco. Check them out, nebcoinc.com for construction, real estate, or recreational building needs. Nebcoinc.com. I'm Austin Norman, joined by the Husker Hall of Famer, the nine-year NBA vet, and we are unintentionally matching today. Shricky, we got the same hat on. Look at yeah, that. Man. Same wavelength. Hey, we represent, baby. We represent. You know we do. Yeah, that's um, how we do out here on the block. When you show up on the block, you can represent, too. You can come on in here. There's all kinds of uh, great... Uh, no, it's not memorabilia. But it's merch. It's merch. Merch. Yeah, there's some great merch out there. You can always get in on your own and mm. tap in. we got Nebraska gear, 93.7 The Ticket gear, and we're going to soon have Paul's. That's going to be coming. We got we got a few things that's coming in the cooker, in the hopper, yeah, in the hopper. Yeah, so percolating. Yeah. Keep keep your ears open. Keep your eyes open. Please do. Uh, you can keep your your ears open on our app that's free on the radio dial ninety three point seven. You can keep your eyes open on stream Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter, as well of course as Allo Channel nine sixty one statewide across Nebraska for Allo subscribers. Strip. We talked about it a little bit. Uh, the Matar Jope transfer. But uh, right after our show during old school, Jamarcus Lawrence entered the transfer portal. Your thoughts on number 10 entering the portal? Uh, surprised. I'll just say that. Um, here, here's why I'm surprised. It's you. He was given every opportunity. This is this is, I think, what hurts more than anything. He was given a tremendous amount of opportunity. He was put in position to thrive, although it was not the position. But you were a starter. Mm -hmm. Now, multiple times you were given uh, the chance to start as a freshman, as a sophomore. It was it, you knew basically leaving your your freshman year. You knew coming into your sophomore year what was going to be expected of you what opportunity was going to be presented to you and you was him. Mm -hmm. You kept it, maintained it, won it, but didn't perform in it. That's not Nebraska's fault. I think that's what's disappointing because that's not Nebraska's fault that you did not perform up to the level that would require and continue you as a starter or your minutes your your minutes are are predicated upon what you're doing. If you're out there and you're 0 for five or one for six, and you know you're not in lockup mode, this is why it's important. I always say you might want to have a niche. Mm. There's something about you and your game. This is all. This is why Alec continued to play. There was, remember, remember when 
I think he was put on notice. The when, Northwestern game on the road. When when he mm-hmm. basically was like a donut, donut, and nothing, and no rebounds either. Mm-hmm. Like, wait a minute now. There, there's, there, there's, there's a problem. Mm-hmm. Houston. Yeah. There's a problem. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Houston. Uh, my my man, the pitcher. Oh, gosh. I just. Ronel Blanco. L- yes, no sir. hitter. Yes, sir. How about that, Stricky? In nine starts. His eighth career starts. Eighth career. Uh, we're, yeah. we're five games into the year and yeah. he has one. Yeah. Shout out to him mm. while we we're talking about Houston. Okay. Um, yeah, man. So that's 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 the issue that I would have. So what else would you what else you want me to do? You want me to cow cow to you? I even put you in a six man role. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you had some success there, but at the same time, you know, I I can't stick stay with you if you you're not giving me what I'm. So that's that's where I I stand on the Jamarcus situation. Mm-hmm. I it, it's disappointing because he's part of that youth that those foundational pieces that you need. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You need those foundational pieces to uh, to take the next step. Yeah. Yeah. You need those. You need that youth, that foundation piece, man. And and, and it's disappointing uh, because him, Eli Rice, as Ramel, well as Ramel, Jope, that, Jope. That, that, that's mm-hmm. that's and, and kids are just so impatient these days. And this is why the transfer portal is approaching almost 2000. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, like 1500 or something, which like is that. insane, which is crazy. Um, on the YouTube stream, Justin, appreciate you chiming in there on YouTube. He says, So surprising and disappointing to see Lawrence go. He would have had a big role on next year's team. He would have been given the opportunity yeah. to have a big role on next year's team because I think when you look at, like you're saying, Strick, Nebraska wanted him to be a starter, they wanted him to take to that position. I don't think the plan was for Bryce Williams to play point guard. I think Nebraska adjusted yeah. to that with. You know, the addition of Aaron Euless in the offseason before the gambling stuff came out with Demarcus Lawrence getting the first crack at that transition. But neither of those worked out. So I think Nebraska ended up relying on Bryce Williams at point guard more than I think it wanted to going into the year. But Nebraska hasn't added anyone in the portal. They've lost a lot of these exciting younger pieces. Are you worried about the offseason right now? So so for me, right, if I'm a young, young piece, we've exceeded expectations. Uh, this is just my mindset. We've exceeded expectations. We get into the we get into the tournament. It's been a long time coming. Mm-hmm. We have a chance to do something unique and different. We landed at third in the Big Ten, mm-hmm. which could have played for the championship. Really, could have been could have easily been there. Mm-hmm. You know, it, with a couple away. of losses, a couple of wins. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Um, and a couple of wins to challenge for the season. Yeah. Right. Um, been up there, and then you're, you're these are all positive things, stuff that you hadn't done, probably nothing, but no one in that room believed. And then you've got a chance to run it back, exceed, and go beyond to be legendary. Mm-hmm. You have a chance to be legendary, and now you want to go somewhere else that. It, it for any of those players on there, it's going to be horizontal. None of them are at going best. to be able to. Uh, at, they're mm-hmm. not going to Arizona. They're not going to any of the. And a lot of those teams are are either set, settled. They're good. They're going to run it back. They feel good about their program. Emergency alert! Back with more. The following is a test of the emergency alert system. Shopping for new flooring is different today. Getting your questions answered, making the right selection, getting the best value, and install quickly and professionally. Visit OStreetCarpet.com or shop our store. We'll answer all your questions and help you make the right choice. You'll be enjoying your new floor at just days for less than you'd pay elsewhere. Carpet, vinyl, wood, laminate, tile, and area rugs. We've got it all. O Street Carpet. 1732 O Street. Family owned and operated. Always the best value. Spring often marks the beginning of severe weather, which can lead to power outages. LES wants you to be prepared before the storm. 
restock your emergency kit, update your info with LES, and if you encounter an outage, report it at LES.com slash report. Your home is your empire. Protect it with Empire Fence. Get a free instant quote with the online estimating tool at empire-fence.com. See an upfront estimate with no hidden fees. An Empire Fence can provide privacy and improve the appearance of your home. Keep kids and pets in or out of your yard. Increase security and add value to your property. Visit empire-fence.com now to view the stylish and maintenance-free possibilities for your home and get a free instant online quote. Let Empire Fence protect your empire. Constructors is now hiring for all positions with laborers starting at $23 and up based on experience. Constructors has immediate job openings for laborers, mechanics, bridge builders, operators, and drivers. Start your new career today. Constructors offers great pay, health, dental, and vision insurance, paid time off, paid holidays, and so much more. Join the crew today and be a part of Nebraska's oldest paving company dating back to 1908. For a complete list of openings and to apply online, visit ConstructorsLincoln.com. Hey, Husker Nation, Matt Davison here with 1890. It's an exciting time to be a Husker fan, and to keep that momentum going, we need your help. Nebraska's always been a leader in college athletics, and we're doing the same through name, image, and likeness. NIL is a unique opportunity for every Husker fan to have a direct impact on the success of our programs. Through 1890, 100% of your contribution goes to the student athletes. So go to 1890nebraska.com, choose your sport, become a member, and help the Huskers recruit and retain the best. Go Big Red. Wall-to-wall -wall wine and spirits is now open in Lincoln. Shop our expansive collection of wine, beer, spirits, and cigars at 5040 North 27th Street. From top shelf liquor to crowd favorite beer, Wall to Wall Wine and Spirits has a beverage for every taste and every budget. Plus, join our loyalty program to earn rewards and save on future purchases. Shop Wall to Wall Wine and Spirits at 5040 North 27th Street in Lincoln. That's 5040 North 27th Street. In every office, there's two types of people. There are those who bring in bagels and those who eat the bagels that someone else brought in. Everybody likes the first person. Be that first person. Weekday mornings at 7.30, you have a chance to win a business box of bagels from Bagels and Joe. All you have to do is shut up simple. Two questions for you, two for sip. Win and the bagels are yours. Lose, well, you don't want to lose. You lost Monday, you lost Wednesday, you're a loser. Shut up simple. Weekday mornings at 7.30, brought to you by Bagels and Joe. What do you think of when you hear the chocolate season? Artisan chocolates? Of course, they have the best chocolates this side of the Atlantic. Friendly neighborhood coffee shop? Yup, they're that too. A nationally recognized top tier brunch spot. Waffle weekends, baby. And the place to grab a gift for literally any occasion? Everybody loves chocolate. See for yourself at The Chocolate Season, 40th and Old Ginny, or order ahead online at thechocolateseason.com. <laughs> Now back to On the Block with Strick and Austin on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Back here on the block, Austin and Strick with you. Stricky, I didn't mean to cut you off. Sorry, no, I have to do that. But to do let's keep pulling at that thread. Jamarcus Lawrence, probably not transferring up. Matar Joe, probably not transferring no. up. CJ Wilcher, no. No. Eli Rice, maybe. 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 Ramel, maybe. I think but again, he's horizontal, probably. But but outside of you He's know Demarcus down. Lawrence, not a lot of those guys have a bunch of positive film. I mean CJ, if he would have entered his name to the transfer portal, would have been like a you know trade deadline guy. Yeah, there would have been some value there. But he really cooled off at the end of the year. Where are these guys again? This is just in a strictly basketball sense. Maybe they're moving for personal reasons. Maybe they want to be closer to home. Maybe they they just you know want a different environment. But in a basketball sense. Where are these guys going to go where they're going to have better resources, better coaching, or most importantly, better opportunity than Nebraska? Well, <laughs> Justin, uh, Justin Roggy, is it Roggy? Yeah. Justin Roggy. So. Uh, he said it. He said basically what it, you and I were talking about off air. You know, he says, Eric uh, agreed. I don't see where these guys can go that will benefit them. They will have so much more opportunity to build themselves here, in my opinion. A absolutely. That that and that's what I was just just really going in on, because it really boggles my mind that certain players are exiting, more minutes are available, more shots are available, all of which 
the coaching staff knows you. They've seen you. You're already in line for that. those next opportunities. You just got to come and take it. Now, if you allow somebody to come in and 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 take it from you and unearth you from the position, that's on you. That just means you wasn't ready for the opportunity that presented itself. So, but here's the problem. You're going to go to another school, another university, another program, and they've already got certain guys that have been waiting in, in tow next up next in line so you've got to go and try to sell yourself to a whole new staff don't fully know you yeah they may be seen you heard about you thought about you and remembered you in high school but what was the issue why wasn't you playing why what there's all these questions now what what i mean i remember you were a dog in high school but mm, what was it there? Why was this person and that person kind of giving deference to you? Fred, um, you know, tell me, tell me really. And guess what? I wouldn't give you any love. I'm not going to hurt you, mm -hmm. but I'm going to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. If I'm Fred and staff, I'm sitting there like, yeah, um, very, very lackluster in, in the hustle on the part of defense. Uh, solid offensively, definitely can shoot the ball. All the things you already know if you're that coach. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just we we had trouble getting him, you know, to to sit down and play defense consistently for a long period of time, or we had trouble with him, you know, just communicating. Communi uh, get, uh, and then all of a sudden, the coach is like, hmm. and then you come in because you've cowed out, you've cowered it out, you've left um, in your mind thinking. Everything's a okay. I'm good. I'm doing all of these things. He's just tripping. He's bugging. You know, I'm, you know, in your mind. And guess what? You go in and start doing the same stuff. Hmm. And then now the coach is like, aha, next guy. And, 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 and they ain't going to argue with you. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? And then guess what? You're just like Kirk Carissa <laughs> in the transfer portal again. On the road again. Uh, th these kids are jumping three and four times in the transfer portal. And it's, and a lot of this is because of what we just said. You're next up. You're next in line. Okay. Like for example, Riley Kugel. Mm -hmm. This is, is his third time in the trans. He's going to Kansas. He made up work, but it's because he was an integral part of Florida. Maybe he just, mm -hmm. he just felt that, you know, they can't get me where I really want to go. I, I beg to differ. You're that guy. Why would you, want to go there guess especially who's, zion poland probably leaving right right guess who's salty right now hunter dickerson <laughs> now not in a bad way because there's a there's craziness that was up in michigan i understand that but mm -hmm. it wasn't what you thought it was going to be my boy no and that's what i'm saying a lot of these cats are going to get there and they're going to understand they're going to come to the realization it's not as green on the other side mm. of this fence that i thought it was going to be yeah, there's going to be some that are going to going to going to benefit. They're going to be happy. Are, are is Caleb Love happy? Probably ish. I don't know, but he left North Carolina, right? So that that's that's an interesting. Is that a that, horizontal move? Go ahead. Is that's a, that's an interesting thread to pull on because Arizona is not the basketball school that Carolina is. But maybe it was a step up for him because Caleb Love was not going to be ACC Player of the Year. Clearly, Hubert Davis preferred RJ Davis. Mm -hmm. You know, clearly there were some butting heads going on between those two guys. So even if Arizona as a the girl, probably <laughs> even if Arizona is a a step down historically, not a blue blood like Carolina is, Arizona's got to have similar resources to Carolina, similar coaching, and it's a new, fresh opportunity. So I understand Caleb Love's move yeah. more than I think some of these others. I'm with you. I mean, and, and that's what I'm saying. I think it can work for some. Mm -hmm. I Listen, Nebraska in itself. So here's an opportunity for Nebraska to either go to another level, do what you did in the transfer portal, identify guys with character, identify guys that fit the mold of what you're trying to build. But the sad part is you're losing the foundation. 
That's the part. That's where the instability of a program exists is in the foundation of the youth. And that's in the life. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. in that's in America. Mm-hmm. That's in any country. If you lose the youth, which I, I can virtually <laughs> say, I mean, America is whoa. You know, our youth <laughs> is in trouble. But there's neither here nor there. You know, my kids are good. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, but that's where the foundation and the instability is going to exist. Now they're bringing one in, mm-hmm. so hopefully he can attract. Mm-hmm. Maybe you get the. The B West connection back. Maybe, maybe. It opens opportunities for that mm-hmm. to, to to exist. But we'll see. I, I'm gonna throw this out here because I think a lot of people strict would look at the roster right now and say, well, the foundation is getting Bryce Williams, Juwan Gary, and Rink Mast back. I think that just got amplified in importance. You know, I think Nebraska needs to do everything they can to keep those three guys around, make them all more consistent at something or everything. But I also think it's a a, a tricky line to walk because you're not going to assemble an all-star team in this day and age of college basketball, unless you are a Duke or a Kentucky going after these highly rated recruiting classes. Sure, you can have a great recruiting class, but you're going to be young. And we're seeing more and more that it's harder for youth to win in college basketball. So Nebraska, think about it standing historically. Not great. It's not going to take, you know, three mid-major starters you know, bring them in and say, yep, you're going to have the same role at your mid-major as you did here. You're going to come off the bench and do this. You're going to come off the bench and do that. And you might start over here. The reason that guys like Jamarcus Lawrence, CJ Wiltshire, Matar Jope are so important to your saying laying the foundation is they can be role players for two or three years, develop into the lead guys. Yes. But Nebraska is not going to go and get, you know, seven all-stars out of the transfer port. Right. You can get one or two yeah. headlining guys. You can maybe get some depth, but the importance of those guys is that they were the next wave. So you didn't have to go get the next Bryce Williams, the next rink mast out of the transfer portal. You had them there in house. All they had to do was wait for their moment. And I'm not saying that Nebraska can't get better because Jamarcus Lawrence, CJ Wilcher, Eli Rice, Matar Jope all had holes in their game. They did, right? It's not like they're all crippling losses. But you start to see some cracks showing, and now you got to patch those before you focus on building the rest of the house up. Well well said. Well said. And, and outside of Juwan, who was a Power 5 guy mm-hmm. when he arrived, the others were step-ups. Mm-hmm. Like, they stepped up into the moment, and they began, they became solid contributors. Not not superstars, but solid contributors to the program's success, mm-hmm. which you love and you need. Mm-hmm. That's a hit. Yep. That's going to the Harris and saying, Mama need new shoes, baby need a band new clothes. Seven. Ha! Ha! You hit. That's a one and a six. That's a two and a five. Yeah. It's a three and a four. Not uh, on the first row. First row. Not 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 afterward because nope. crap. Yep. They hit. Mm-hmm. And so you hope when you hit that you build this unified group that stays together, i.e. F, uh, FAU. Mm-hmm. You're able to keep these guys. That's what I'm looking forward to, honestly, because I think Coach Rule's got it. Mm-hmm. Coach Rule was able to retain guys, a lot of that young, a depth. lot of that, mm-hmm. keep young, bring in young depth talent, mm-hmm. and implement and supplement with older guys. That is, that's what you're. So I'm hoping that it's Rule went down to the casino. He put it on twenty one, red, bam, it hit jackpot. That's what I'm hoping for Nebraska mm-hmm. yeah. on the basketball side and the football on, on side. The, the football. Really, yeah. that leads me to this question, Strick. Nick and I were talking about what's the next step for Nebraska men's basketball because winning the same number of games next year, staying in place wouldn't feel great. But also, since you've left, this isn't a program that has sustained success. So winning 23 games again, I think, would be good enough. But there's also got to be more out there. You can't just mm-hmm. get to the tournament. Yeah, I, I described it this way. Nebraska moved into the neighborhood of NCAA tournament teams, right? It doesn't have the nicest house on the block. You can tell that the yard needs some work. Maybe the siding needs to be redone and a couple 
patches on the roof or maybe falling off, but you're still on the block. You're still you're still right there. Facts, you are on the block. Yeah, in, indeed, <laughs> literally and figuratively. <laughs> so how do you, you get your house looking more like the rest of the houses on the block? Is it through doing what Nebraska's done recently in recruiting mid-major guys and hoping that they can transition to the Big Ten? Or is Nebraska in a good enough spot now, Strick, where it can afford to take swings and have a legitimate chance in conversations with transfers from high major programs? Can, can Nebraska get those guys that are going horizontal as opposed to those guys who are going up? I think what Nebraska was able to do, it makes it sexier for them to look here. Mm -hmm. Right? Should look more appealing. It, it, it's like... It's like Neo walking on the Matrix, and he's talking to uh, uh, Morpheus. And Morpheus is a schooling them a little bit. They're walking in the you know a lot of in a crowd people, and then he says, uh, "What are you looking at, Neo? The woman in the in the red dress, red. Mm -hmm. Feel feel me mm -hmm. now." And he says, uh, "Look again. That's that's what it feels like, Nebraska." You know, take a peek at the at the at the at the. You know, that's what those guys are. I think looking mm -hmm. looking like they're looking at. Ooh, this is an opportunity. Ooh, Rink Mass is coming back. Solid guy. I know he'll drop a dime on a brother. Ooh, they need a point guard there. Ooh, Tamanaga's leaving. I know he was able to get busy. I like shots. I like minutes. I will take those. That's I think what makes it an interesting proposition to look at Nebraska. Mm -hmm. From those guys that, you know, are looking for an opportunity. I mean, you're, you, you're third in the conference. Mm -hmm. You, as, as Nebraska and Fred Hoiberg, can sell it. You can sell. We need you to help us to go to the top. Zach Eadie's mm -hmm. leaving. You know, it's going to be open for us to take over the Big Ten. We think you're in our corp. You can actually sell a story now that I don't think you could have sold last year. So that's why I think the... It, it, it is a sexy proposition uh, mm -hmm. as opposed to in the past. Sexy proposition does sound like Las Vegas, but anyways, <laughs> um, before we get onto the shootout with Strick here in just a couple minutes, there, there's a lot of interesting names out there for Nebraska to target, to replace these guys in the transfer portal. You mentioned Kirk Risa, um, not sold on that one, but maybe I mean, he's been a high major player his whole career. Um, JV and McCollum transferred to Oklahoma. He was from Siena. Nebraska was taking a long look at him last year. Maybe he's the guy that you, you kick the tires on again, say, hey, we're still interested in you because he can run the true point. Still a pretty good shooter. You look at a guy like uh, JP Pagis from Furman, he would be a step up, but he was the one that hit that game winning three against Virginia in the tournament two years ago. I think if a guy like, you know, Milos Uzon from, from Oklahoma, Miles Rice, who helped uh, Washington State make it to the tournament. He's in the portal. Um, the Hofstra guy, Dubar. That's a pretty big step up, but he's pretty highly Ooh, rated. I would be looking at the Harvard guy, the point guard. Oh, uh, Malik. Malik Mack. Ooh. Malik Mack, yeah. But he's the, a baller. He, he, we, we probably couldn't get him. He's probably going to be able to go to any program he wants to. Right. He's that good, though. Oh, yeah. And see, a lot of those guys that I just mentioned are the, the step up guys. McCollum, maybe not, but he did last year from Siena to Oklahoma. But then it brings me to this strict. Why not like Joshua Ola Joseph to replace Josiah Allen? Those are pretty similar guys, you know, hypothetically. Why not like a, a Scotty Middleton, who's a, who's a wing from, from Ohio State, and Eric Daly, who's a power forward from, from Oklahoma State? Heck, throw your name in the ring with like a Cliff Amori, right? If you lose Jope and you want a rim protecting center, Oof. why not why Amori? Not? Um, why not a guy like a Duthiero? who would be wing depth for you, who played at Kentucky. If Nebraska is a more attractive option, I think Nebraska needs to, to find this balance moving forward, Strick, of take the guys that you know you can develop from the mid-major levels, but what did we talk about Nebraska needing? A lot more athleticism. Take the power six athletes and see if you can't develop one or two of those guys into a true difference maker, too. Facts. I think that's... Um... There's not much to elaborate on that one, Austin, because I think you I think you're right. I think you need to get more athletic. I think you need to get um 
your style, your free flow style is one that works for af- athlete, athletes, athleticism. Mm-hmm. Um, if that's what you want to continue to run, guys that can get out on the wing, I still think one, I still think a point guard type who understands time score situation, when to push, when to run sets. Okay, they've been on a run for the last 10 minutes. They're they're 8 0 10 0 run. We need something solid. Okay, boom, mismatch here. You know, that can actually play those games, knows when to push it up, knows if I if I'm running and and I'm and, and I have a secondary break type situation, if I throw it up to this guy, I know that he's going to make a right decision. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm I'm, I'm only going to say Juwan Gary. I'm going to say if I throw it to Juwan Gary, Oh, I might want to wait a little bit, especially because of the time and situation, because I think he might attack and we don't need that right now. Attacking a miss right now is going to hurt us more than more than help. Us. You know what I mean? Yeah. Unless he's, you know, a push to two on one. Mm-hmm. That's different. So right. you're able to kind of read those. Things. I think that's a needed thing. Mm-hmm. If you get somebody like that, that can do those type of things. I'm all for it. But I think, athleticism guys that are freakish and in like um who's that kid what school did he go i think he went to the virginia tech and all he he's all he does is freaking he's like that kai 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 dude from uh that got uh released from charlotte um oh uh kai jones kai jones he's Mm -hmm. like him freak athlete jumps out of the gym not very but good boy he can go get it. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh-huh. I would say somebody like that. I mean, he may not be in the portal, but I'm just saying mm-hmm. just super freak athlete that is not willing to put somebody in the rim will mm-hmm. go get it. So I, 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 I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, you mentioned playing craps or roulette. We're going to play phone call or roulette here uh, with no screener. Let's go to the, the uh, Honda Fling and Hotline. Caller, what's your name? My name is Mike. Hey, Mike. How's it going today? What you got for us? Well, I was in Memphis, and I happened to run into Jamarcus Lawrence's uncle, and I wanted to know what you guys thought of this. And so I walked up and talked to him for probably 10 minutes, and he gave me the whole spew of Jamarcus from the time he first started playing basketball, and we got to talking, and I I told him how I respected how Jamarcus accepted his role coming off the bench. And he said, oh, you know, he, he just plays for the team. He doesn't care. He's these kids are playing for each other and, you know, just, you know, he doesn't care. He's a team first guy totally. Um, and I said, you know, I think, you know, if we can keep all these core guys together, we'll be better next year. Oh, he's coming back. There's no way he's leaving the team. And, you know, he loves these guys. And again, I mean, he's, he's saying all the right stuff and, and either one of two things, he either didn't know at the time, or why would he tell a stiff like me? I just want to ask you guys a question because, I mean, this guy was was so pumped up. It got me pumped up for next year. Do you think, you know, the whole year we were talking about how great the chemistry was. Was it maybe not quite what we thought it was? Is this kind of a sign of maybe it, it, it wasn't what we thought it was? Or is this just the way of the world nowadays? I'm just, just kind of. Just kind of confused by this whole thing because it really felt like a slap in the face. Mike, thanks pre- a lot. Yeah, appreciate the call, Mike. Thanks for listening, calling in. Yeah. Um. So here, here's the thing that I would say. I honestly, Austin and Mike, I truly believe that that's cap. Meaning <laughs> <laughs> that no, I don't think that was that was true. I think these guys actually enjoyed and they enjoyed playing with each other and playing for each other. You don't do what you now mind you my here's how i'll explain that my team my senior year we probably was the second or third most talented team in the big eight talent wise Mm -hmm. everybody returning back from a team that was you know we knew we had to grow we were solid and with that we knew that we were going to be good. We started out like 11 and one. Turmoil internally 
little nitpicking, little cancerous stuff, little, you know, you know, um, you know clicking type mm-hmm. stuff starts happening. As in C-L-I-Q-U-E-I-N-G, yeah. not C-L-I-C-K-I-N-G. Right, mm-hmm. right. That stuff starts happening, and you go on a 10-game lose streak. It's not until we then got together, squashed all the issues, squashed all the beefs, that then we went in. Uh, we, the talent that we had shows, and mm-hmm. you win a national championship for the NIT. Okay? That's the same thing with this team. There's no way they do what they do. They learn what they learn, grow how they grow, accept the roles that they – and put themselves in a position that no one expected, that no one believed, and that no one thought winning the way that they win against two top ten – pro. There's no way you do that with not having, you know, camaraderie. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't happen. And I'll take Mike at his word that that's what the uncle said. But number one, I maybe the uncle didn't know. Maybe something yeah. changed between Memphis and, and this because it wasn't like Demarcus entered the transfer portal immediately. It's not like we were hearing rumblings of this. I think he took his time and thought it out. But I would also hope, Strick, that again, I have no reason to believe this isn't true. Demarcus Lawrence seems like a mature young man. Um, he could be it, looking at who's coming in too. He could be. I, I think that being accepting of your role on the team is a game to game thing, a year to year thing where Demarcus probably understood that. Yeah, I am more comfortable coming off the bench right now. Um, but I'm not okay with it. I, I want more out there for me. You th- those aren't necessarily in conflict with each other. Cause you can feel like, Oh, I still deserve to start. Oh, I still deserve more of a chance. But then when it comes to practice, it comes to game time. It comes to your interactions with the coaches and teammates. You can put that down and say, yeah, I think I deserve more, but I'm not going to be a problem about it. I'm not going to act out about it. I'm not going to take shots I shouldn't over it. You know, you can feel one way and act the other way and still have both things be accurate at the same time. I think Jamarcus handled it pretty maturely, especially in this day and age of college basketball. Now, him sticking around, you know, growing, developing here at Nebraska. Would have been nice for Nebraska. We could see the path for him. We makes me wonder why we didn't see that same path. But I don't think he necessarily, you know, took the easy way out or didn't like his teammates or was lying to anyone. No, I, I don't either. I, he doesn't rub me to be that kind of young man. Mm-hmm. I think he's probably processed it and thought it through. I think he's probably understood that, okay, I'm probably not best here. I need to get somewhere where they'll allow me to be in my natural position. Mm-hmm. Um, if he wants to play professionally, he's going to have to learn it. This is why I thought it was the best opportunity for him yeah. to grow in a position. They're literally giving you the keys to grow in the position that you're going to need if you want to play at a <laughs> professional level. That, that's, mm-hmm. you, you're not going to go into anybody's NBA or even – it'd be tough overseas. Now, you'll you probably be able to get it off on some mid-level, lower-level teams overseas. You'll probably be able mm-hmm. to get it off. You, you're not going to go to – to to the uh, not Spain, not your, France, your Euro not league. Euro You're not going to go to Euro no. league, and no way. Enjoy Greece, <clears throat> right, right. So yeah, um, shout out to Earthquake Glue. He says Jop uh, on the Soderham text line four zero two four six four five six eight five. He says Jop was a freak athlete. Absolutely, I have to agree with you. I think he was just raw, and this is where I think it's going to be. He's going to do a disservice to himself be, in, unless he feels that whoever on campus or whoever the coaching staff was, was not able to develop him to be the type of player. Now, so that's what I'm saying. It it could be other nuances to it. It it, it may not just be that he doesn't feel that he's a fit. He can step into the role. Could be that maybe he feels that he's not getting the development or the coaching Mm -hmm. that can take him to another level to have an astronomical leap as opposed to an incremental leap, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe he's looking for that. Okay, not mad at it. Uh, unnamed texture 4332 says, where's Nebraska's NIL? He said, we should be able to get top transfer portal guys. Um, see, that's the thing. There, there's a, there, obviously shout out to 1980. They're a wonderful, uh, 1890, 1890. Gosh, darn it. Did I say 19? Golly. You're Forgive back me. in your heyday. Shirky. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Young Stricky running wild. Young strictly, Stricky, uh, <laughs> wild and out in Cali. Um, <clears throat> 1890. Um, shout out to them because they've done uh, a wonderful job in the collective and putting things together and helping out in, the, in that. But then there's very football dominated. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do work with everybody, but football dominated. And 
you know, this is the part that I think Fred, uh, Coach Hoiberg, and, you know, the staff needs extra pieces Mm -hmm. that have basketball minds to be able to go out when Fred came, Mm -hmm. where you allow Fred to just come in, seal the deals, but not have to go out and do all dredge up the deals, right? Yeah. Yeah, and because I think they need an NIO department uh, separate of, you know, 1890. Mm-hmm. 1890, part of it, but, yeah, you know, you need something else to go and, and find those opportunities uh, out there. And it can't just be in state. I think it's got to be outside state because mm-hmm. one thing that I can say for Nebraska is the alumni is vast. There's Californians for Nebraskans. There's mm-hmm. Phoenix. I mean, Phoenix has one of the biggest freaking – Chicago. They're, they're everywhere. Mm-hmm. New York. Mm-hmm. I mean, saw the banners everywhere when I was <laughs> they're everywhere. So that's the thing I, I, I want to say. It want, you want it to be in a national appeal. You want it to be able to appeal to it on a national level. Let's take a break with, uh, with those thoughts out there. Call now, 402-464-5685. To play the shootout with Strick. Four questions for Strick. Four for you, 30 bucks to Buffalo Wings and Rings on the line. We'll wrap up Hour 1 with that next. Constructors is now hiring for all positions, with laborers starting at $23 and up based on experience. Constructors has immediate job openings for laborers, mechanics, bridge builders, operators, and drivers. Start your new career today. Constructors offers great pay, health, dental, and vision insurance, paid time off, paid holidays, and so much more. Join the crew today and be a part of Nebraska's oldest paving company dating back to 1908. For a complete list of openings and to apply online, visit ConstructorsLincoln.com. Grandma and Grandpa, Mom and Dad, then the kids, and now the grandkids. Jetson Irrigation has provided lawn sprinkler system design, installation, repair, and service to four generations. They're just like members of the family. Loyalty, trust, service. It's what you deserve and expect from Judson Irrigation. Keep summer green. Call Judson Irrigation, 402-420-6277 or judsonirrigation.com. Wall-to-wall wine and spirits is now open in Lincoln. Shop our expansive collection of wine, beer, spirits, and cigars at 5040 North 27th Street. From top shelf liquor to crowd favorite beer, Wall to Wall Wine and Spirits has a beverage for every taste and every budget. Plus, join our loyalty program to earn rewards and save on future purchases. Shop Wall to Wall Wine and Spirits at 5040 North 27th Street in Lincoln. That's 5040 North 27th Street. Attention all Wings fans, 89 Cent Wings are back on Tuesdays at Buffalo Wings and Rings in Lincoln. Enjoy the best wings in town for boneless or traditional at a price that makes the whole family happy. And now at the Williamsburg Village Wings and Rings, you can enjoy $1.50 Tall Boys in Bud Light, Coors Light, Bush Light, and Michelob Ultra every day after 7 p.m. and all day on Sundays. Get to Wings and Rings today and make sure to stop by on Tuesdays for 89 Cent Wings. Spring is a time of new beginnings and trying new things. If you haven't tried Fuhrer's Cheese Spread yet, the time is now. For parties for St. Patrick's Day and Easter or celebrating the NCAA tournament with friends, there's no better dip to bring everyone together and celebrate something from Nebraska. Get to your local grocery store today and load up on Fuhrer's Cheese Spread. No event or party is complete without it on your table. It's time to play Shootout with Strick. Call now, 464-5685, to take your shot against Eric Strickland. Shootout with Strick, brought to you by Buffalo Wings and Rings. Time to play the game! Let's do it! We have a contestant on the line, the Hard Death Lincoln Hotline, to be precise. We welcome in Jason to play the Shootout with Strick. Jason, how are you this afternoon? Well, it's nice and windy, so it's at least it's fairly warm, so we'll be pretty good. There we go. That's the spirit. Uh, are you familiar with the rules of the shootout? I ha- I am. I've listened a lot of times, so hopefully, hopefully I can do it justice. All right. Hold on the line. We'll give Strick his four questions first, and then we'll get to you. Stricky, your round of the shootout starts here in three, two, and one. He was the first Big 12 winner of the Wooden Award, Wayman Tisdale or Danny Manning? Wayman Tisdale. It was Danny. He was the first Big East winner of the Wooden Award. Chris Mullen or Kenyon Martin? 
Mullen. It was Mullen. He was the first back-to-back -back winner of the Wooden Award. Ralph Sampson or David Robinson? Ralph Sampson. It was Ralph. And this SEC player won the 2022 Wooden Award. SEC? SEC player. 2002 Wooden Award. 2022. 2022. 2022. Five, four, Brandon. Two, um, one. Charlotte. Brandon. Brandon Miller? Yes. It was not. It was Oscar Sheepway of Kentucky. Oh, Big O. Shoot. I knew that, too. Okay, not bad. That's a two-point round for you. Two-point round. Jason, two to tie, three to win. You ready for your round of the shootout? Oh, uh, Let's give it a shot. Okay, it goes here in three, two, and one. He was the first Big Ten winner of the Wooden Award. Calvert Chaney or Glenn Robinson? Chaney. Yep, he was the first ACC winner of the Wooden Award. Uh, Phil Ford or Michael Jordan? Oh, let's go with Ford. It was Ford. He was the first SEC winner of the Wooden Award. Jeez. Anthony Davis or Joe Kim Noah? Anthony Davis. It was Davis. And this Big Ten player won the 2021 Wooden Award. Oh, that's, it might be too much. Right, let's go with Zach Eady. It was not Zach Eady, but it boom. was a big man. Boom, shakalaka. Boom, and boom. Give me a hell yeah. That was easy. I knew all of them. I said, give me a hell yeah. See, I knew he was going to do me like that. The answer was Luca Garza, who won it in 2021. Listeners, I knew he was going to do me like that. Yeah, after the conflict we had yesterday about Duke, I knew he was going to do me like that. See, I gave him the easy ones. <laughs> Jason, congratulations on the win. Ignore Strick's comments. It was perfectly fair and balanced. Thanks for playing. Hold on the line. We'll get you your 30 bucks of Buffalo Wings and Rings here. Thanks. Yeah. I thought it was fair. No, I knew I thought it. it was fine. I knew it. It was fine. Mm -hmm. It was balanced. I knew, I, I, knew, I knew you was trying to throw the trick question with the Jordan, but that was a fake. It was, know, a fake that was a fake out. That was a fake out, and I it already was. knew you was. I knew what you was doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good try, Stricky. All right. <laughs> Good try. Next uh, time. Next time. Go get him. Uh, Thursday will be the next time we play the shootout with Strick. 30 bucks to Buffalo Wings and Rings on the prize. Congrats to Jason. When we get back, Stricky and I are going to try to answer this question, and we need your help as well. Who is the best transfer player in Nebraska men's basketball history that started their career somewhere else, came to Nebraska? Who are the best transfer players? Who's the best transfer player? In Nebraska men's basketball history, we answer that question to lead off hour two of the show. This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. Also online at theticketfm.com. On the internet. KNTK FM Firth, 93.7 The Ticket. Your home is your empire. Protect it with Empire Fence. Get a free instant quote with the online estimating tool at empire-fence.com. See an upfront estimate with no hidden fees. An Empire Fence can provide privacy and improve the appearance of your home. Keep kids and pets in or out of your yard. Increase security and add value to your property. Visit empire-fence.com now to view the stylish and maintenance-free possibilities for your home and get a free instant online quote. Let Empire Fence protect your empire. High schoolers, unleash your creativity and learn about potential careers in broadcasting at the Digital Expressions Media Camp. Have fun, make friends, and get hands-on experience with video and radio production June 9th through the 14th at the University of Nebraska at Kearney. Scholarships are available from the Nebraska Broadcasters Association, and spots are limited. Learn more at digitalexpressionscamp.com. That's digitalexpressionscamp.com. Problem gambling affects millions of Americans daily, of all ages and walks of life. If your loved one is struggling with addiction, contact Choices Treatment Center's 24-hour helpline at 402-476-2300. That's 402-476-2300. What do you think of when you hear the chocolate season? Artisan chocolates? Of course. They have the best chocolates this side of the Atlantic. Friendly neighborhood coffee shop? Yup, they're that too. A nationally recognized top-tier brunch spot. Waffle weekends, baby. And the place to grab a gift for literally any occasion? Everybody loves chocolate. See for yourself at The Chocolate Season, 40th and Old Chini, or order ahead online at thechocolateseason.com. 
This is Brad with Midwest Bank, proudly serving our Nebraska communities for over 70 years. We're a community bank, making local decisions, supporting local organizations, and helping local businesses and farms succeed. We are dedicated to serving our clients and helping them meet their financial needs with sound, innovative banking solutions. From an array of checking and deposit accounts, cash management services, to small business, real estate, and ag lending. We're here for you, your community, your bank, Midwest Bank. Find out more at MidwestBank.com. Member FDIC. Looking for a job that feels like family? Join Lincoln Industries, where tradition meets innovation. They're a family-owned, privately held manufacturing company with a passion for excellence and a commitment to their community. They have openings on all shifts at both the main plant and air park facilities, offering flexibility to fit your schedule. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting out, there's a place for you there. At Lincoln Industries, they invest in their people's success, providing opportunities for growth and advancement. Apply now and become a part of something special at Lincoln Industries. Sick of being upsold at gyms? My guy, you're currently a base member? For $90 more, I can upgrade you to our Shred membership. For $130 more, you'll be a swole member. And for just $300 more, you'll reach Sweat Platinum. At Planet Fitness, you'll get energy without the upsell. Never pushy, always free fitness training and equipment for every workout. It's fitness that fits your budget. Join Planet Fitness for just $1 down and $10 a month. Cancel anytime. Deal ends Friday, April 12th. See Home Club for details. Attention all Wings fans! 89 Cent Wings are back on Tuesdays at Buffalo Wings and Rings in Lincoln. Enjoy the best wings in town for boneless or traditional at a price that makes the whole family happy. And now at the Williamsburg Village Wings and Rings, you can enjoy $1.50 Tall Boys in Bud Light, Coors Light, Bush Light, and Michelob Ultra every day after 7 p.m. and all day on Sundays. Get to Wings and Rings today and make sure to stop by on Tuesdays for 89 Cent Wings. Landmark Implement is your local authorized John Deere dealer. Landmark's trained and certified sales staff will help you find the right equipment for your needs at a price that's right for you, all backed by Landmark's extensive parts and service network. Whether it's a tractor, planter, combine, an easy track lawnmower, or gator, every piece of equipment in pre-owned inventory is put through a rigorous inspection so it's ready to work hard for you. Landmark's team works together to make sure everything is sold meets their quality standards. Learn more at LandmarkImp.com or stop into a local Landmark location and experience the Landmark difference. Spring is a time of new beginnings and trying new things. If you haven't tried Fuhrer's Cheese Spread yet, the time is now. For parties for St. Patrick's Day and Easter or celebrating the NCAA tournament with friends, there's no better dip to bring everyone together and celebrate something from Nebraska. Get to your local grocery store today and load up on Fuhrer's Cheese Spread. No event or party is complete without it on your table. For over 15 years, Integrated Life Choices has empowered individuals with disabilities in Lincoln and throughout Nebraska. They provide comprehensive services from group homes and independent living services to job training, ensuring fulfilling lives for those that they serve. Now, they're inviting you to join their mission. If you are passionate about making a difference in the lives of people with developmental disabilities, explore rewarding career opportunities with them. Learn more about their services and apply today at www.ilc.net. Be a part of Integrated Life Choices, where your work truly changes lives. Hi, folks. Sean Callahan here for Couple Chevrolet GMC, and the Chevrolet and GMC Truck Month is now underway. We've got huge savings in Louisville. Get 9000 off or 1.9% for 72 months on select models. Yes, you heard right. That's 9000 off or 1.9% for 72 months happening right now at Couple. So take that short money saving drive down 144th Street or check us out online at couplecars.com. You'll be glad you did. All deals with roof credit stock number G214773. This is On the Block with Stricken Austin. Nebraska Basketball Hall of Famer and nine-year NBA vet, Eric Strickland. Strickland for three! And you're going to go out of here at the Big Eight Club and champion. Middle school basketball coaching legend and Duke basketball shooting coach in his mind, Austin Orman. Coming at you live from the heart of Lincoln, America, on air and online at theticketfm.com. Presented by NIPCO, this is is on the block with Strick and Austin. And we did hash out our differences over break. I promised Strick that it'd be more fair on Thursday, even though I thought it was pre- plenty fair today. Yeah, you were good, man. I just, I'd be teasing. Yeah. Yeah, they they got me. Gosh, it was that one. I, man, I should have known Danny Manning. 
Wayman Tisdale, people don't but remember how good that man was. He was really that good. He was mm-hmm. really that good. I mean, him and that Mo- Mookie Blaylock team, mm-hmm. they were freaking dangerous. Yeah. So, yeah. But, no, it's okay. We're good. Me and Austin are good. See, whenever you get on the block, you may box at times. You know, I'm, I may have to Mike Tyson him every now and then. But for the most part, we are uh, we good to go over here. Mm-hmm. We thank you guys for being go- mm-hmm. good to go with us and sharing this two-hour time of hanging out on the block with us. For sure. We like hanging out with you. We appreciate you hanging out with us. Thanks to Nebco. Appreciate them for sponsoring the show. SoCal Tacos brought in lunch day. Appreciate that. And Sarder Heyman sponsors our video streams. Justin, you're really active on YouTube. We'll get to your comment here in just a second. Uh, Facebook, Twitch, Twitter also available for you as is Allo Channel 961. The question in front of us for this segment and maybe the rest of the hour, depending on uh, how strongly y'all feel about this, who is the best transfer that Nebraska men's basketball has ever brought into the program. Who is it? That's the question in front of us. And here's the jumping off point for that trick. As I went back trying to put my own list together for some of the top guys, I had to stop in the late 2000s. I couldn't think of any guys in, you know, like 2008 and earlier. And I asked you. I've got one. I've have, got two. Okay. But you didn't play with many guys who transferred no. in, did you? No, it was, it was, it was rare. Um, I want to say Jamar, Jamar was kind of a transfer. He was back then we had something called prop 48. So that those were kind of transfer situations where you may be a Juco or you just don't have the grades yet. and You're able to give you a certain amount of time in order to make that. So I want to say Jamar was one of them, but even that Jamar wouldn't have been it for me, but I'm going to tell you who I think is. It was a man by the name of Tony Farmer. Tony Farmer, if Tony Farmer would not have left, Tony, Tony was a, he was a tremendous pro, but he would have been an NBA pro, but Tony kind of talked a lot. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that kind of got him in trouble. It's one thing. But, but he transferred out. He didn't transfer in. Yeah. I think he transferred in. Oh yeah. He okay. wasn't, he wasn't a freshman. Tony Farmer wasn't a freshman up. Yeah. I think he, he transferred in and then he played a couple of years. And it was with that team that, you know, went, was ninth in the country. He started at San Jose State. Yeah. There you go. Good call. Tony Farmer. And Tony, Tony was like a gazelle. He was an anomaly. He was one of those ones that can shoot it. He could stroke it. He could run. He was physical. He could rebound. He was super athletic. Um, But if he would have stayed, boy, our freshman year would have been something special. Mm. It was already good, but to have somebody of his caliber, it would have been absolutely so. So that would be the one I would say. Mm. Then we get into the the more more recent ones. And I think the, the debate that comes to mind is the one that Justin throws out on our YouTube stream, James Palmer Jr. to Rand Petaway. Yeah, that was my uh, other choice. You you heard me say that. Mm-hmm. Petaway would have been my other choice because I, I just thought he was a he was a super dog. He was he he. He wasn't afraid of anything. He would attack. He could get hot. He was streaky, but boy, I mean, he would, he was long. He would defend. I just loved everything about him. I think, I think Palmer could have been a great two way guy, but he was so offensively skilled and dominating that I think that kind of took over. And that's why I would have went with Petaway. I, I, I give deference. I give deference to defense. You know that, man. I'm, I'm, I, I like those guys that can do a little bit of both. And see, I go the other way. I go with Palmer because he was a he was an all Big Ten player twice. Petaway was all Big Ten once. Palmer also made an all Big Ten tournament team. Um, numbers across the board. Um, so at Nebraska only. So excluding Texas Tech for Terran Petaway and excluding Miami for James Palmer Jr. Um, so Terran Petaway at Nebraska played in 63 games. He averaged 18 points per game, shooting 47% on twos, 32% from three, and 77% at the free throw line. Flip that over to James Palmer Jr. Played 69 games at Nebraska, so pretty comparable there. He shot 45% on twos, 31% on threes, and 75% on free throws, averaging 18 and a half points per game. Maybe the differentiator is Petaway led a tournament team and James Palmer Jr. didn't. It's very possible. I don't know. I, my differentiator that is one but my differentiator was he 
Terran would give me a little bit of two way action. He'd give me mm. a little. So he would give me those numbers, but I know that he would he would he would take a challenge and go and defend somebody if he needed to. How's about how's about this one from Brad on the text line? Teddy Allen, the best transfer in Nebraska basketball history. Teddy buckets. Mm -hmm. If if he would have kept his mentality right and just wasn't sometimes just a nuisance off the court and just all the stuff that came with it, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But on court, yeah, Teddy buckets could get it done. Um, High volume guy, special. He could have been special. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Here's an interesting one. And Husker fans, I would love your your opinion on this one. We're going to save the, the the crown debate for just a minute here. But Delano Banton or Sam Greasel? Both guys only end up playing one year at Nebraska. Greasel didn't have to sit for a year. Banton did, so he was on the team the year before. Who do you think was better at Nebraska? Strick, Delano Banton or Sam Greasel? Um, I would have to go with Greasel for me. I think Greasel... Although he he didn't have a burner for a jumper, I still think that he was very capable. I think that the the shyness of him, he he had capabilities of taking over, just wouldn't. You know what I'm saying? But he he could go and get you a double double if he needed to get you that. If he needed a big win or a big bucket or um, he was a mismatch problem, I think Delano had that too. I think Delano probably was better defensively. But I think the fact that Greasel had capabilities of Delano, when he shot it, I didn't know if that thing was going to hit the <laughs> side of the rim or the back. I, it just was the one backboard, of nothing, everything. That part. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> there's where I probably would go with Greasel. Both of those guys were so mild mannered. Greasel did take over. I mean, that Creighton game comes yeah. to mind up in yeah. Omaha where. Really, Nebraska just cleared the left side of the floor and ran two man game with Walker and Greasel. Sometimes there's even, you know, Walker at the, the nail and Greasel just backing his way all the way down court against Alexander for the most part. That's a really interesting one to me as I scroll through the list of other guys that I think, you know, deserve to be thrown into this conversation. Lance Jeter only played a couple of years at Nebraska after transferring in from Juco, he's but like has, a bull, he's like a bowling ball. Yeah. Yeah, he's strong. Most assists by a two year player in Nebraska history. I think that deserves uh, consideration. Bo Spencer transferred in from LSU, got some buckets. Dylan Talley was a, a bit player here and there. Andrew White. That is a weird yeah, that's one. A name to that me. gets missed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Why is it weird to you? Because he transfers in from Kansas. Okay. Oh, this is a big get for Nebraska. Mm. You know, the guy that was, you know, high four, low five star rated did have some stretch ability. I mean, really, I think is size-wise, the prototypical size for an NBA two guard, especially in that era. But he took a lot of shots. He was coming down off of the Pettaway tournament teams. He wasn't able to quite carry that mantle. The shooting didn't translate like you thought it would. And then he bounces after just one year, and he ends up going to Syracuse. So I think Andrew White, might be one of the more talented guys, but I don't think his Nebraska career lived up to his talent level. How about that? Facts. Thumbs up on that. Yeah, I don't really have. Um, it, but again, this 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 is the thing that I have a problem with the transfer portal on. It's um, and again is why I don't have much to grasp from outside of the new guys because I didn't have to play. I, I <laughs> the guys I came up with or the guys that I saw the you know, when I was getting a little bit older. So mm-hmm. I, it was one of those things that, because I think there was just so much risk back then from transferring. You transfer back then, if you go in conference, you're two years down. Right. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. that you're like, wait a minute, I'm not sitting two years. I mean, you're losing two years. Mm-hmm. You go out of conference, you lose one. Um, I, I just wasn't willing to take that risk. Mm-hmm. It just wasn't, that wasn't in my pedigree. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, On the text line, Travis says, it's hard to compare Delano Banton and Sam Greasel. Greasel was more established in his college career. If Banton had the experience that Sam had had, it'd be a different story. But I think that's kind of the point, is that Sam Greasel, you know, might have been the better college player because he he was around, he paid his dues at North Dakota State, transferred home for one year at Nebraska. What was so exciting about Delano Banton is he was 6'9", 200, ran the fast break. I don't know if he got a triple-double, but got close a couple times and is clearly the better pro prospect. Sam might be playing like Germany or something right now. Delano started for the Trailblazers, so I think you could you could kind of see that difference you know, play out in college as well. 
Yeah, I mean, anytime you got a six nine guy that can just just look at what Penny Hardaway was. I mean, I I don't care what anybody says. The injuries to Penny Hardaway, Tracy McGrady, and the likes of those guys that had that kind of special talent at that height and had burners on them, uh, they were problems. You know, I don't care. It was even you can even say Grant Hill problem. Mm. You know, guys at that six eight, six nine that that can play point guard mm. and do those different things. And it all started uh, by way of Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson was an absolute problem because he can guard five positions, play five positions. Obviously, you know, you didn't want to have to guard him against an Isaiah Thomas if you didn't, <laughs> you didn't, you didn't need him to. You'd much rather mm. him guard somebody else. He just didn't have the fleet of foot to do that. But listen, guys like that, those anomaly type of guys. They're, they're, they're problems. I think if Delano Batten had a, a consistent jumper, which I always tried to get him to work on <laughs> when he was here, uh, yeah, he would be dangerous. Um, let's go to have this debate now because Nebraska ball fan asks, have we mentioned Derek Walker? Here's the conversation. Who was the better transfer for Nebraska, Derek Walker or Kese Tomonaga? Oh, Wow. That's tough. Now, I love D Walk. Mm -hmm. No, I, I will always forever have an affinity for D Walk because I got a chance to work with him a little bit, you know, just mm. work on some skill stuff and watch him continue to want more, desire more, and become more. Now, where D Walk for me, I would say misses the mark from K Say. Um, D Walk, if he Coming into his junior year, you knew who he was. Mm -hmm. Now, he developed a skill that separated him because he has both hands, right and left. He learned how to create space. He learned, these are the things that I talked to him about, that I worked with him on. I always talk to him, and this is why I can appreciate him, I talked to him about counters. I said, you come into this year, you have two to three strong counters on moves that you have that are go-to so that you give them go-to, you give them one counter, and then you have another one waiting in the wings for if they try to stop you in, in certain things. He did that. But then what I said to him is, I need you to expand that jumper. I don't care if it's 15 feet or 18 feet. That's what's going to set up your game for a whole nother level. But that didn't develop. And that's where I think I would give it to Kese because I think Kese understood and realized some of his deficiencies um, as far as being able to create space. And he grew out of that by way of setting up, setting up screens, back cuts, just different things to find a way to get himself space and get open. And that's where I probably would say that he probably progressed and grew a little bit more for me. And that's why I choose Kese. I like that. It's hard to argue with that, especially because these are guys that came in at, at a similar time. Derek Walker side out here. Casey Tominaga didn't really play much his first year after transferring in from Ranger. They both grew. I mean, the Derek Walker that came from Tennessee was not the Derek Walker that you saw at Nebraska. Even with Casey Tominaga, like, like you're saying, he added to his game, his off the bounce repertoire. And I know you said you refed Casey, right? Yeah. Down at Ranger. You didn't yeah. see him cut like he was down in Juco, was no. he? No. No, I, I would actually say that Kese was even better in JUCO. Uh, this is why I was surprised that he didn't uh, position himself more as a point guard mm. because I watched him play. I, yes, he did a lot of the two guard stuff. Yes, they set up a lot of, but I watched him work off of screens and split guys and set guys up and hit guys with you know that ah 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 and give him that work. Like, I was like, dang, I mean, okay, I saw this, but I didn't see that. Mm. Now, I saw the range, the step-offs, all of that stuff, but I didn't see that, that ha, ha, ha that I used to see from K-Say, that he'd give you that, that, he'd give you that Kenny Anderson type work that he gave to Ooh. Bobby Hurley. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, there, you got to go to YouTube and you watch when Georgia Tech played against Duke I'm sorry. I'm sorry, uh, my boy. You, no, these we, things we, happen. We worked through I, this. It, it, these things this happen. Problem. But um, Kenny Anderson came down and gave Bobby Hurley in the paint that ha, 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 and then dropped him off with a teardrop. Yeah. k used to have that. Mm. I used to see that and be like, like, I used to have to keep myself from going like k used to do. 
I used to, I used to have to be, you know, you, that's not a good look to be ref in a game. And you're like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I had to be careful. So, <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of what I saw from him back then. On the Kasey front, a couple pieces of news. This happened at the end of last week. He was announced as a participant in the uh, Final Four three-point competition. That's a huge mark of honor for him. But also, just today, he's selected to uh, the, the Reese's NABC All-Star Game. So Kasey will be playing uh, Friday at 5.30 uh, in Glendale, as well as part of Final Four Friday. Uh, you can watch Kasey one last time, Husker fans, on CBS Sports Network at 5.30 on Friday. Those are all good. Because it's, it's preparation for, mm -hmm. you know, he may get invited to Combine just because of his selections and so forth and so on. But that's going to uh, that's going to get him on just just continue to put those lights on him and 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 give him a shot. I personally think he'll get a shot. I think mm -hmm. it's going to be out west, wherever it is, mm -hmm. from Portland to Golden State. Being that, you know, listen, don't 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 get it twisted. NBA teams look for marketing mm -hmm. as well. Their business. Listen, Houston drafted Yao Ming for a reason. That gave them access into marketing merchandise in China. San Antonio and Wemby. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Don't don't get it twisted. There's there's mm -hmm. market abilities and there's reason. I, I could see him out. I can see him anywhere up and down the coast. L.A. Mm -hmm. L.A. Clippers. I can see even Teron Lou. Okay. And, and, you okay. know, just by way of the connection, taking a flyer, bringing him into camp. Mm -hmm. Giving them a shot, um, and I can see all of that up and down. But but maybe even Phoenix. But mark my words, just be on the lookout. I could be wrong, and I may be wrong. I don't see it out east, but I do see because he doesn't. He doesn't as a Philly. As you know, he's not like that. It's not that Jeremy Lin type magic. No, no, nah, I see it out west. I if think it's gonna happen. I think you're onto something there. Um, who will K-State's teammates be? This is kind of an interesting list. Uh, Brandon Carlson from Utah, uh, Jesse Edwards from West Virginia, Enrique Freeman, who's really good for Akron, Jalen House from New Mexico. So Eddie House's mm -hmm. kid will be playing with him. Uh, Gabe McLothan from uh, Grand Canyon we saw against Alabama. Tyler Perry from Kansas State. Who Tyler Nebraska Perry, the, down the Medea? Medea Tyler Perry? Yeah, that's Perry. the one. He played for Kansas State. <laughs> that's the one. Can you dresses, imagine dresses in the the grandma masu? <laughs> Can you imagine Medea guarding Kasey Tomonaga? Oh, that would be hilarious. You probably post him up with that big that big wide donkey <laughs> booty bang nail going bang, on. Bang bang down low. <laughs> Some other interesting names then on the East team: Jamison Battle from Ohio State. You have Jack Golke from Oakland, the guy that hit the 10-3. I still think he made a mistake. Pause. I want to hear those. Pause. Um, I think Battle made a mistake. I think if he would have came to Nebraska, that could have been something. I think mm -hmm. the style, the fit worked. That would have been a oof. you get that kind of stretchability at the four. Oh boy! Shoot. Oh boy! boy. That would have been. Whew. Okay, I'm sorry. I just, I just needed, I just needed to to say that's that to me is is the sign of a young man that made a mistake. Mm -hmm. He went horizontal and didn't think about fit. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of kids don't. They kind of get caught in the namesake or the hype and don't think about the fit. If you're going to jump in the transfer portal, truly think about the fit and think mm -hmm. about all the other things that come with it. Go ahead. And I think you're onto something that really ties our whole conversation together that Nebraska can't afford to miss on the next Jamison battle. Find a way to convince that guy to help take you to the next level. Uh, Drew Pember from UNC Asheville on that team. Um, nice mid-major guy. Quentin Post from Boston College had a pretty good year. And Jameer Young of Maryland will be playing in this game as well. So a little familiarity for Kase Tomonaga in that game. We'll I remember, a, I remember playing. I remember playing. Um, man, it, I think I shared this. It, it was one of the greatest experiences. I think I, I want to say it was either my senior year, or it was right before we left that summer. It was probably the summer going into my senior year when I went over to play in France. Mm. And so we played, we played in Toulon. We played in Marseille uh, against some of the French teams. And then we played in um, Antibes, which is in Monaco. That was one of them. And I think we maybe lost maybe one game. Ooh. I think we we're like 11 and one. And it was, it was, it was beautiful. I mean, that team was like Rafe LaFrance and, and uh, Danye Abrams from Boston college. I think I told you it was Brevin Knight and, 
you know, Kwame Evans, who mm. was like at George May or George Washington at the time. So it was a fun group of guys. That's a tremendous experience. It's an experience that you would always cherish where you get to, you know, get with guys that you probably have seen, heard about, and compete with them. And it, it's it's a fun time. That's going to be a great experience for Casey. Congrats to him on that. And uh, we'll definitely be rooting him on in that and the three-point shootout as well over the weekend. He's Strick. I'm Austin. This is On the Block with you for another half an hour or so. More of the show in just a sec. Keep summer green with Judson Vileen and Judson Irrigation. More than 40 years ago, Judson Irrigation started taking in orphans. Lawn sprinkler systems installed by a quickie, cheapy summer job, install them and forget them outfit long forgotten. Call Judson Irrigation. They'll never forget you. Keep summer green. Call Judson Irrigation, 402-420-6277 or judsonirrigation.com. Are you looking to get into the electrical construction industry or wanting a new scene? The electrical workers of Local Union 265 are now hiring licensed journeymen and apprentices and are offering great pay and benefits. Call Mike at 402-875-1034 to apply. Start your electrical career today. Landmark Implement is your local authorized John Deere dealer. Landmark's trained and certified sales staff will help you find the right equipment for your needs at a price that's right for you, all backed by Landmark's extensive parts and service network. Whether it's a tractor, planter, combine, an easy track lawnmower, or gator, every piece of equipment in pre-owned inventory is put through a rigorous inspection so it's ready to work hard for you. Landmark's team works together to make sure everything that is sold meets their quality standards. Learn more at LandmarkImp.com or stop into a local Landmark location and experience the Landmark difference. At Fairway Meat Market, your family, and as part of the family, they want to save you money on your meat and groceries. Now, through April 7th, enjoy USDA Choice 8-ounce New York Strips for $6.99 each, hickory smoked bacon for $4.99 per pound, fresh boneless skinless chicken breast for $2.99 per pound, and whole tri-tip for $9.99 per pound. That's all at Fairway Meat Market in the Rockledge Square Shopping Center, just south of 84th and Van Dorn. Rashawn Jackson here for Bauer Infrastructure, a veteran-owned local company proudly serving Lincoln, Lancaster County, and the surrounding areas. Bauer provides quality work at an affordable price, and they're growing rapidly. If you want to experience a career with a fast-paced, family-friendly environment, visit BauerInfrastructure.com. They have top-of-the-line benefits, year-round work, even through the winter. Bauer, usher in the new era of infrastructure to an area near you. And as always, go Big Red! Looking for a job that feels like family? Join Lincoln Industries, where tradition meets innovation. They're a family-owned, privately held manufacturing company with a passion for excellence and a commitment to their community. They have openings on all shifts at both the main plant and air park facilities, offering flexibility to fit your schedule. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting out, there's a place for you there. At Lincoln Industries, they invest in their people's success, providing opportunities for growth and advancement. Apply now and become a part of something special at Lincoln Industries. 93.7 The Ticket, Fox KFXL Weather. Brought to you by Bryant Air Conditioning, Heating, Electrical, and Plumbing. Your know, Lincoln forecast for today, some clouds this morning will give way to sunshine this afternoon. It'll be breezy, an afternoon high around 55. Tonight, mainly clear and breezy, an overnight low around 33. And tomorrow, we'll see mainly sunny skies and more wind, with an afternoon high around 54. I'm meteorologist Kyle Clecker for 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Empower a child today with the Teammates Mentoring Program. Hope is only a conversation away when you choose to share your talent, time, and heart with a child. Together, you can build a relationship based on strengths and chart a brighter future one week at a time. Find out how you can be a mentor by visiting LincolnTeammates.org. Become what you needed as a kid by joining the Teammates Mentoring Program today. Houses? They're expensive. And once you buy one, you're kind of stuck with it for a while. You need to make sure you get your best house for the best price. You need Ben Bleicher and his team of pros at Professional Realty Group. They'll take the time to figure out what's important for you in your dream home, and they have the expertise to find the hidden issues that could surprise you after the sale. That's professional knowledge, proactive service. We call that potential. Ben Bleicher and the team at Professional Realty Group of Berkshire Hathaway's Home Service Ambassador. Find more online at prg-ne.com. 
Spring is a time of new beginnings and trying new things. If you haven't tried Fear's Cheese Spread yet, the time is now. For parties for St. Patrick's Day and Easter, or celebrating the NCAA tournament with friends, there's no better dip to bring everyone together and celebrate something from Nebraska. Get to your local grocery store today and load up on Fear's Cheese Spread. No event or party is complete without it on your table. Garage doors can be expensive. Are you keeping yours in the best condition possible? This is Cameron Hall with Doors Plus. Doors Plus is a locally owned business that prides itself on the fast, reliable, and friendly service. Doors Plus offers flexible scheduling so you can book an appointment that fits your busy day. My team and I will come out to your property, both commercial and residential, and provide you with the necessary information you need to make sure your garage door is in working and smooth condition. Give Doors Plus a call today at 402 590 5800 to book an appointment and learn more about our preventative maintenance plans. Doors Plus, Garage Doors, and more. Now back to On the Block with Strick and Austin on 937 The Ticket and TheTicketFM.com. We're switching gears from one Eric Strickland specialty to the next from basketball to baseball. Maybe some football involved in this as well. It's happening today in Jackson County, Missouri, there's a special election going on to extend the three-eighths of a cent sales tax to provide public funding for a new baseball park for the Kansas City Royals and renovations to Arrowhead Stadium. We're trying to do that at Bellevue West. Oh, are you? Yeah, but we're we're talking about Kansas City right now. But but, but, We're actually trying to do that. What what does Bellevue West need? Any more than they already have. Man, what do they need? Listen, nothing, not not a thing. No, Bellevue. The, the rich get richer, Stricky. No, the rich get richer. Not at all. And that's the thing that I think is missed. I think you have the surrounding areas of Papillion, obviously the growth of Gretna. West Side has gone to a whole nother level. Creighton Prep. District. Creighton mm-hmm. Prep has 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 done some things. And you know, one of the things is you don't want to get behind too far. Mm-hmm. But I think I think what happens, Austin, in Bellevue, I think um, the success of the sports programs has helped to maintain it, but I think they've had some drop off in 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 uh, attendance numbers mm-hmm. and um, the surrounding the housing hasn't kind of gone to that next level. Some of the development, but some of the things that they're trying to do, I think, is trying to work. But I, I know that we're we're trying to work on it because we want we want to kind of keep those keep them on point but that's something that we're trying to work on right now we're having discussions and and so yeah so i understand this it's a tough process don't know if i've ever asked this question your dad you so your dad was at Offit. yeah right yeah how many other you know military kids were there about your age and how many of them went to west versus east oh uh, see that's the thing it just depends on where you lived at the time i mean mm-hmm. cluster johnson and i both are military kids gotcha. that's how you know we both ended up there and and so in junior high uh, because of where Cluster lived, Cluster, I think at the time lived um, over by the where the youth center is, and it was uh, it was off of maybe Cape Heart Road, mm. and it was a little you know area there that they lived, which went to Logan, but it was West District. It was weirdest thing. <laughs> it was West District, but he went to Logan. I went to Mission, and I lived more back towards the back part of the housing area, which was a place called Looking Glass. And we lived there, and we went to Mission. So all the kids around there were Mission kids, and then we ended up going to West also. Mm. So a lot of the East kids, some of the East kids lived in certain parts of the base, and certain parts of the base was West. It was weird. Huh. And so depending literally on like these breakdowns on where you lived, you were either east or west. Districting is so weird. It's crazy. I bro. still don't understand how it works or who like gets to determine it. But now it's open enrollment, so people can just go anywhere they want. Right. Um <laughs> But what what's going yeah, on? Back back to the topic at hand here. Let's start with this question, Strick. What's the lifespan of a pro sports stadium or arena? Is it a 20 year, 30 year, 50 year. Like, like what's the lifespan for a pro arena in sports? Well, see, that's the thing, right? You, you can do something like similar to what 
they did down in Atlanta, right? With Mercedes Benz Stadium, mm -hmm. right? At the time, Mercedes Benz Stadium was just immaculate. Now, the way they stepped themselves up is they watched Jerry Jones and what they did with Jerry's World down mm -hmm. at AT&T. So owners are watching. Owners are come to realizations that there needs to be something done. I still think Green Bay's stupid because, <laughs> but that's an advantage for us. I still think places like Buffalo and some of these, these New England, I'm still thinking, why would you not put Don't a, a tractable <laughs> roof? Even if you want to keep some uh, retractable roof, step it up. But I guess they like what they like. I'm personally, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm basketball taking season Deion <laughs> ba Basketball season. I think that's why I went to basketball. I hated practicing in the cold. So, um, I think I want to say it's a, it's got to be a 20 to 30 year mm. because what happens is new ownerships, they'll, they'll step up and build a new one. So you have Mercedes that steps up and build a new one. You are, you know, then you'll have like Phoenix and then you see what, Ooh, what Vegas did. And then you're like, Ooh, well, what, what can we do? You know, what's next? Oh, this is kind of, man, I'm the people are tired of sitting on these hard wooden benches. So then you kind of get the – everybody kind of starts to cycle and start stepping up. And then all of a sudden, if you're Jerry's world 20 years down the road, you're like, wait a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit obsolete. I'm feeling kind of feeling kind of old. Now it's time to go to another level. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of what's going on. Watch out for uh, Dallas Mavericks probably, you know, like AAC's not crazily – you know, you're working at that 20-year range or just above. Their new lease is over at 2030, and I, I know Mark and – and the new Adelson group is probably trying to do something super immaculate. But I, I think he got kind of messed up in that deal. He's kind of upset about it because mm. of, you know, Ross Pro Jr. is a uh, he's he's a big real estate guy. And so for him, the surrounding area around the, the stadium was motel, not motels, but condos. Mm. So you take away a lot of the parking. So parking at uh, at AAC is is a headache. It's like, wow, you got to walk such distances just to figure it out. Cause you got all these freaking condos right there. And I'm sure it's probably, I'd be frustrated as heck trying to come home from work, from, from work. And you know, there's a basketball game going on <laughs> or a concert or something like that, but there's 2030 before they make their change and their, their adjustment. And a lot of that's not because the arena's bad. It's because, you know, bad for business as far as ownership mm. with Mark and the Addison Group wants to build, you know, this casino friendly, probably. I'm, I'm not saying for sure, but that's <laughs> well, what they, they're working on. Because that, that's where the Adelmans are from, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh huh. Um, Mississippi Mud Duck said, Strick, don't you ever call Green Bay stupid? The colder, the better. Well, see, I, I mean, that's what I'm saying. They they enjoy that. They they like the fact that the frozen run. This is what they play for. They play to basically get home field advantage. So that they can bring you to the tundra and, and walk you out of there freezing, <laughs> shaking in your boots. So I understand mm -hmm. that. I understand that dynamic. I'm not mad about it. I'm just saying I think it's stupid. <laughs> Let me just say, I, and look, I like Green Bay. I think Green Bay's on the up. I, I, you know, I think Green Bay to me is like Nebraska. No one thought or uh, no one believed that they would even be where they're at. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just with mm -hmm. the losses of everything. But but be on the lookout for the Jets this year too, because um, if if they get a healthy Aaron Rodgers, I still I think they're a dangerous team. Added yeah. some good pieces to, to that yeah. roster. But yeah. when you mentioned that about the the AA Center, it makes sense. Would they go to a whole new location? Or like Miami's just... probably. What does Miami do? Oh, but go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. You're I, good, I'm, good, I'm just because I'm thinking about AA. AA they're, yeah, they're both one's AAA and one's AAC. But yeah. right, so I, that's why I kind of popped in my mind. But they're stuck on the water. But then they're kind of getting older now. They, that was around when I was playing. Right. So, you know, that's kind of a, a situation too, but go ahead. But in those cases, is it better to renovate what you have or move to a different tract of land? Because I can see it both ways. Because as a Royals fan, what I've seen is that the Royals have been in Kauffman Stadium since 1973. Mm -hmm. that, that stadium is 50 years old. And yes, they've renovated it. They did that back in, I think, 2006 is when they renovated it. They've kept it pretty well up to date. So it's not like it's lacking in anything, but the Royals and Chiefs built their stadium out kind of in the middle of nowhere. Easy yeah. to get to, easy parking, great tailgate scene. We've heard Jay talk about it, whatnot. Um, and that's fine, but that's not the way things are going. You know, yeah. things have trended toward downtown stadiums, Centers, the, the yeah. districts around it. And that's where I think the big conundrum is, is that 
Kaufman's fine. They could probably play in that for another 50 years if they keep renovating it. But it's understandable to want a new stadium to see if, you know, you can energize downtown a little bit. But that brings me to this question then, Strick. Is it okay for public money to be spent on these projects or should that come from the top down with the owners instead of from the citizens? Well, I know that they do. They There's different ways that they go about doing it. Sometimes mm-hmm. um, it's some form of a tax that they add to it. It's sometimes um, it's a match where, mm-hmm. you know, that sometimes it's, it's owners driven, but with tax incentives to the owner for doing so whatever means that they come about or what works best for them, uh, you know, it just depends on the economy of, of the location and if they feel that they it's feasible for them. I think inner city, inner city, this is why you're seeing where, like, doggone it, San Francisco 49ers don't play in San Francisco. No. It's in Santa Clara. Like, is it really San Francisco or is it the Santa, Santa Clara 49ers, right? The, the Bay Area 49ers. Because yeah. it, they have the tax basis to handle that outside Mm. as opposed to in now you can do what you did with Vegas because you've got casino money. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you can, you can do stuff like that in that specific area. I think inner, some inner city locations is tough because they're losing inner city like finances because a lot of people are not, staying in city they're moving mm-hmm. out of city this Suburbs is why as you can this is yeah. why dallas is not in dallas anymore it's in mm-hmm. arlington because sure. it just it was more attractive to kind of go to some mm-hmm. of these areas and this is this is what you're starting to see with another location and that's chicago chicago's looking to move they're not going to be where they're at they're going to move out you saw the same thing in dc where they moved out to landover you see what i'm saying so this is this is kind of what I think a dynamic that's happening out there is just some of those inner city bases just don't have the coin to to handle it and it becomes more attractive out in the suburbs. The the one exception to that really is your Marlins. Yeah. They built their stadium in the heart of Little Havana, which I would not have expected. I mean, it's pretty close to the water. That's I mean, why it's they just draft a few blocks, draft. but yeah. No, I'm, I'm I'm I want you to go. I just was saying this is why they draft how they draft. You you see a mm-hmm. lot of um latino descent Mm -hmm. being pulled into just just for that because of the location and the base and you know it's very heavy cuban down that in that area so you're seeing well some marketing you were talking about with case in the nba it's the same thing isn't it same same idea behind it um 3802 says the padres moved downtown as well 5703 says st louis has done it right um bush the second uh first built the original downtown bush people told him he was crazy but it went over pretty well. 2006, they built right next door for the newer Bush Stadium, and it's awesome. So maybe maybe look at the Milwaukee um, did it. Milwaukee cores much, yeah. just getting thrown out there. And the Mud Dog asks, "Isn't Kansas City building a stadium in downtown?" That's what the vote today is. Is will they actually get this project passed? We do carry the Royals here on these airwaves. So whether they're still at Kauffman or in the new stadium, you know, hopefully in you know five years if they move. We still have the rights, but I'm interested in this trick because the Royals haven't really presented much of a plan. They've done a couple renderings here and there, but really it's been, we'd like a new stadium. Trust us. We'll get it done more so than, Hey, here are the actual issues that are facing us. Here's how we plan to, to work with the community. And a lot of this. here's why we want to move. Yeah. There's all kinds of stuff. Not all those questions have been answered. Yeah. So the the interesting move to me is not that the Royals are are doing this, and I don't think if it's a situation where if it's a no vote, they don't get their new stadium. I don't think John Sherman's a flight risk. I think he comes back with another plan to, to keep the Royals in Kansas City, but get a new stadium down the line. But the Royals have tied their project to the Chiefs getting money as well. Mm. The Chiefs aren't, you know, building a new stadium, at least at this point. They're just renovate they're just renovating arrowhead adding more suites adding more amenities once the k gets torn down there'd be a little bit of a district there from what i've heard the royal stadium would not pass on its own but because of the success of the chiefs and how many people have enjoyed watching them and want arrowhead you know to have these renovations become you know a hip new cool area 
this might pass just because of Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, which is kind of wild to think about. Wow. Hey, sneak it in. Slide. <laughs> slide to the left. Slide to the right. Just slide it on in. Pause. Um, yeah, that's what's, you know, I guess that's how you're going to work. If you got to work it, figure out a way to work it. Mm -hmm. work, work, the, work, work the Mahomes magic. Yeah. You know, put it. Put his name on the star and just have it pop up, <laughs> you know, with his face out there like, yeah. Make Patrick's house nicer. <laughs> <laughs> well, but here's the thing. Patrick, he has ownership in what what team? The Royals. There you go. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I, I'm sure he would jump on a billboard somewhere and be like, hi. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. I, I'm sure he would because that's going to only help his bottom line. Well, I know. I mean, as, a, as an owner. Oh, for sure. And I know yeah. there's a station in Kansas City that, got Andy Reid on TV, like right after he walked out of his precinct, like he voted yes. Of course, Andy Reid's going to vote for a better oh, house for himself. I don't even know if he lives in Jackson County or not, if this affects him, but and I that don't know. Stadium's really been around. I mean, yes, they've done some upgrades and they've, they've enhanced it. Well, Arrowhead and Kaufman were built at the same time. Yeah. I mean, the Chiefs and Royals have operated as two entities, but basically they've been joined at the hip now hand in hand for the last 50 years. Yeah. So I think that's what some other people are interested to watch too is, do they stick together that same site or is it time for them to do their own thing, branch off and move? So my thoughts to you, because you're, you're a big Royals fan. Do you like the location that they're at right now? Do you like that separation? Do you want it to be built in like a, 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 a like a, a, a city center where there's a lot of action. There's a lot of restaurants. There's a lot of, you know, just little, little, little bars and things that enhances the tailgate experience, so forth and so on. Um, or do you kind of just like it how it is? The fact that it's kind of out and it's not bothering too many people. You can go out to it, mm -hmm. have a good time and take your butt home. So Nick raised a good point that I think some people in Kansas city don't love where it's at because it's so easy to get to and out of that. You don't have to go through town. There's nothing else to do. So there's some economic opportunity missed. There is nothing wrong with Kaufman stadium the way it is right now. It is a nice stadium. The access is is wonderful. It's logistically very sound. But here's the thing. I, I'm not a tailgater. I'm not showing up, you know, four hours before a Chiefs game or three hours before a Royals game and firing up the grill or anything like that. So having all that parking space, being out there where the tailgate scene is the thing, isn't appealing to me necessarily. I enjoy downtown Kansas City, you know, being by the, the Sprint T-Mobile Center, whatever. And, and power and light is pretty fun. I would love to be able to, you know, go get dinner um, in Power and Light, take a bridge over I-70 or 670 or whatever it is, 470, and walk to the game from downtown. You know, stay in my hotel downtown and walk across. That's what I would like. You know, I've also not been a fan of a team. I guess the Colts did build Lucas Oil, but I haven't been there. It's been a while since I've, you know, seen a new stadium to root for, to explore. So selfishly has been there since I was even there. Right. Playing. Right. Yeah. Selfishly. I want it. I, I want a new stadium. I mm -hmm. think there's a lot of cool, cool factors. Now, they used it. to have the RCA dome. They did used to have the RCA. Yeah. Dome. You remember that? The first house. With it collapsed. Dome. It did. Yeah. yeah. It kind of, so did the, uh, Syracuse, um, that carrier one, dome, carrier dome. Yeah. Type, yeah they, 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 those type of domes started falling off, but here's the thing. Um, do you like Haymarket or CHI? Oh, Haymarket. Just a little bit more. Well, well get Haymarket, down there, has, Haymarket get has no Creighton ties, so oh. Haymarket automatically <laughs> takes the cake. Okay. I was just saying for the vibe. Oh. um, Just kind of like, you know I, what I mean? I haven't been to enough games, which is weird because they're both really close. I've been to a handful of games there, but it's so different. I, I would love to compare a Nebraska baseball regional to a college world series mm, environment. That to me good. would be the test. I mean, PBA versus CHI. I think those are very, very comparable sort of arenas baseball. I don't know if we've seen a true one-to-one -one yet, yeah. or at least not in a long time. Yeah, that's, so. That would be an interesting thing. I wish I could sure get out there today and watch the Creighton and Nebraska, you know, mm. get it on today out there at uh Haymarket field. Six o'clock first pitch. Boy, I would have loved to have gone to that. But that's okay. Oh, well. We're going to go to Jay Foreman. How about that? Let's do it.
Crossover with Old School next. Sick of being upsold at gyms? My guy, you're currently a base member. For $90 more, I can upgrade you to our Shred membership. For $130 more, you'll be a swole member. And for just $300 more, you'll reach Sweat Platinum. At Planet Fitness, you'll get energy without the upsell. Never pushy, always free fitness training and equipment for every workout. It's fitness that fits your budget. Join Planet Fitness for just $1 down and $10 a month. Cancel anytime. Deal ends Friday, April 12th. See Home Club for details. Wall-to-wall wine and spirits is now open in Lincoln. Shop our expansive collection of wine, beer, spirits, and cigars at 5040 North 27th Street. From top shelf liquor to crowd favorite beer, Wall-to-Wall Wine and Spirits has a beverage for every taste and every budget. Plus, join our loyalty program to earn rewards and save on future purchases. Shop Wall-to-Wall Wine and Spirits at 5040 North 27th Street in Lincoln. That's 5040 North 27th Street. Spring is a time of new beginnings and trying new things. If you haven't tried Fear's Cheese Spread yet, the time is now. For parties for St. Patrick's Day and Easter or celebrating the NCAA tournament with friends, there's no better dip to bring everyone together and celebrate something from Nebraska. Get to your local grocery store today and load up on Fear's Cheese Spread. No event or party is complete without it on your table. Looking for a job that feels like family? Join Lincoln Industries, where tradition meets innovation. They're a family-owned, privately held manufacturing company with a passion for excellence and a commitment to their community. They have openings on all shifts at both the main plant and air park facilities, offering flexibility to fit your schedule. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting out, there's a place for you there. At Lincoln Industries, they invest in their people's success, providing opportunities for growth and advancement. Apply now and become a part of something special at Lincoln Industries. Your child was embarrassed when you arrived at their basketball game. 75% of parents or guardians report current alcohol use. Drinking alcohol can cause harm to children and loved ones. By drinking less, your child will be excited to see you at their basketball game. If you or a loved one is looking for help, find a treatment facility near you at findtreatment.gov. For immediate support, call, text, or chat 988. Brought to you by Nebraska DHHS in partnership with SAMHSA. Landmark Implement is your local authorized John Deere dealer. Landmark's trained and certified sales staff will help you find the right equipment for your needs at a price that's right for you, all backed by Landmark's extensive parts and service network. Whether it's a tractor, planter, combine, an easy track lawnmower, or gator, every piece of equipment in pre-owned inventory is put through a rigorous inspection so it's ready to work hard for you. Landmark's team works together to make sure everything is sold meets their quality standards. Learn more at LandmarkImp.com or stop into a local Landmark location and experience the Landmark difference. Hi folks, Sean Callahan here for Koppel Chevrolet GMC and the Chevrolet and GMC Truck Month is now underway. We've got huge savings in Louisville. Get 9000 off or 1.9% for 72 months on select models. Yes, you heard right. That's 9000 off or 1.9% for 72 months happening right now at Koppel. So take that short money saving drive down 144th Street or check us out online at KoppelCars.com. You'll be glad you did. All deals with roof credit. Stock number G214773. What do you think of when you hear the chocolate season? Artisan chocolates? Of course. They have the best chocolates this side of the Atlantic. Friendly neighborhood coffee shop? Yup, they're that too. A nationally recognized top tier brunch spot. Waffle weekends, baby. And the place to grab a gift for literally any occasion? Everybody loves chocolate. See for yourself at The Chocolate Season, 40th and Old Cheney, or order ahead online at thechocolateseason.com. You don't think about your roof very often, but you should never take it for granted. Roofing Service Company takes every measure to provide you with the highest quality roofing solution. Whether it's a new roof installation, roof repair, or a re-roofing project, their overall goal is to provide you with a pleasant experience and a long-lasting roof. If you have a need for siding or gutters, they're your place too. Visit RoofingServiceCompany.com for more info today. Now back to On the Block with Strick and Austin on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Well, let's wrap it up on the block. Strick and Austin, appreciate y'all for tuning in here throughout the day. Thanks for chiming in on the Starter Hammond text line and uh, Justin on the YouTube stream. You're going ham. Appreciate you uh, being involved here with the show. We welcome in Jay Foreman of Old School. Jay, welcome in. What's up? What's happening? 
A uh, lot. Been a really good show today. Most of it spent on the transfer portal for Nebraska men's basketball. Man. Uh, you and I talked through Jamarcus Lawrence a little bit yesterday. Uh, Matar Jope in yeah. the in the portal today. Um, but oh, it, it feels uh, like Pac Man, bro. Waka 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 waka. What, waka, what waka, is it? Why, why you say that, that? That, but it feels like Pac Man, where the ghost called him. Ew. It, caught, it, it caught feels who? like a shrunk. The ghost caught Pac Man. It feels like that's what it feels like. The what, team was what, all of a sudden they was about to hit the Pac Man pellet and 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 start what you chomping you, on the ghost. And then all of a sudden, everybody disappeared, and it's when you die. So you saying the program's dead? No, I'm just saying it's dwindled to the point. You know how the Pac Man is fat, and then all of a sudden, when it gets hit by the ghost, nah, it worried. goes no, 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 no. I ain't it shrinks. That, it's I'm shrunk. Not trying, I'm not hey, trying to hear that. All I want to know, all I want to know, what do you, what's the, what do you attribute this to? Well, let's dang, just get, I'm just let's, saying they shrunk. Just, I'm just trying just to ask quick. you. You, you the how many people left on the team? Austin? You the basketball expert. So Five, why don't you tell six. us, Rick? Okay, so right now remaining on Nebraska's team from last year: six Williams, Gary, Mast. You have Hoiberg, Sam Hoiberg, Jacobson, Burt, Grace, Euless, Euless. Is Eight. he still on the team? Yeah. Yeah. Eight. Where is he at? Eight, but really on the bench. No, Four I mean, goes is he, is he, is he, he, he was there. He traveled yeah, with he the was team. There. He, he was still, there. He, he was on so, the court. So now the, the gambling stuff's over. He'll be able to play? Yeah, next Hypothetically. year. Hypothetically. Mm -hmm. So really a significance four or five. Yeah. Significant. Mm -hmm. Other ones are kind of, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll say what now, Jay? What's the question, my boy? What do you attribute this to? Um... I have my attrition. feelings. I want to... I'm, I'm gonna, I, I, I have my feelings. I want yours. Because you know more, you know more about basketball. What it's like to be in a locker room with a team that had somewhat, you know, success. That's his real success. I shouldn't say somewhat, but has reached places that they haven't reached in some, a very long time. It's frustrating because I can't. I really, Jay, I can't identify with it because we didn't have this type of, you know, attrition. Well, because the rules were different. But in the, you know NBA, in the NBA, you've been on teams that maybe exceeded expectations, and then the locker room instantly changes. Yeah. And, and it's not based on upstairs. It's based on, you know, back when we played, you might get Well, that more. was Boston. Okay. You because might, we, you, we you, went you, to the conference finals, and then they didn't let us run it back. They right. Basically well, that, got well, that, that's upstairs. But have you ever been a part of a team where you maybe not go as far as Boston, but say you, you get into – the playoffs or you have a good run at the end of the season maybe not even make the the playoffs but then guys you know start to feel themselves all right start all of a sudden they call you up and say hey jay i need you to be a guest appearance down in soho if when you you know with the knicks or or you know start to do a couple autograph because that was a big deal to us back then they, these guys got nil where we you know to go hustle. When, right when you when the marketer dude comes up to you and say he's gonna yeah. he, then you then you start to get those things your week starts to get scheduled versus when the when the Palm Pilot. Let me when you say check my Palm Pilot. This was your Palm Pilot. <laughs> then you've got a real Palm Pilot with some stuff you got to do, and you get that Quan coming in. It changes the dynamic of the locker room. Yeah, do you I, think it, that's it the case? Do you I, think? Do you <clears throat> think being associated with the team in various roles for each player, all of a sudden you go up higher on the list? I think. I think. I think no. And Dang. Here, here's why. He just shot my stuff down, Austin. Good no, job, Jay. Yeah, no, yeah. no, let me just he throw can bait you. He, hey, he did. He can bait you. Hey, what is it with the shotgun? Mercado. The, 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 the clay, the clay <laughs> oh, yeah. pigeon? Shooting trap. Yeah. Bam. Quick. <laughs> with the eyes closed. No, get out of here, Jay. <laughs> he no scoped you. No. He, he, hey, but you see no. how quick he did it, though? He's like, no, nah, that ain't it. No. No, brother. No. No. Crazy. What did he say? He said, Paul. Oh, boy. Paul, 10 seconds for station ID. Thanks for your response. Yeah. Sports Talk on the FM dial. Also online at theticketfm.com. On the internet. KNTK FM Firth. 93.7 The Ticket. <laughs> hey, Austin, Austin, you said negative, Ghost Rider. That pass is full. Don't fly by. Your fly by is not... Is not <laughs> Wait, here, let me, let me not explain alive. myself. All right, go ahead. Because here's, here's the thing. I think what happens is a lot of people get in your ear. Mm -hmm. Back home. Everywhere. Parents. Everywhere. The internet. You, you, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So the dynamic or, or the, the piece that I think a lot of them are missing 
is, and we talked about this, and I and, and I and, and I, I do want you to you know to to drop your knowledge on it. The piece that they're missing is when you're next up, it's better to be next in line with a cashier that's familiar with you than to go next in line with somebody that has no clue about your situation. You know how it is to call somebody mm -hmm. to deal with customer service. Oh, You're yeah. next up. You deal with that customer. You lose connection. And then you got to call somebody else and Let's try to figure again. out. They, like you, changing you got, flights. That's you know exactly what, what you're doing. You got yeah. to explain to them the whole dynamic. That's what it's like transferring. You're going to go into a situation and compete against guys where that coaching staff has specifically recruited they 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 watch them develop mm -hmm. and now you've got to go and prove to them you've got to do over and above than if you would have stayed your butt right here they know who you are they know what you what you bring to the table yeah. they they they've watched you grow and develop now they're going to see you come back with something more whereas that other group is only seeing what they see from you and if you got a little bit of tape on them i think it's the dumbest dynamic there's more minutes. Yeah. There's more shots. Yep. There's more opportunity because some some of these guys have broke. For Matar Jop, I'm like, are you freaking idiotic? And yeah. I don't mean to call the man an idiot, yeah, but yeah, I'm but just, saying. Yeah, what are you thinking? Bro, where where do you think you're going to go? That's going, you're raw skilled. Unless you're going to a place where you feel that that person is like, unless you're going to a place where Akeem Olajuwon was there, and I'm not saying he's there, yeah. but I'm saying yeah. you know he's going to be that person developing you. Right, yeah. Then they why are you the, leaving? Yeah. And, and you're going to be able to work through some of your your uh, speed bumps and in, in your development in the game. Yes. That means you That means you essentially have to go down a step or Did two. What I say? Austin. That's what I think. A you, lot of these guys are going to have to horizontal downgrade best, probably at best that. horizontal. That, that, Jamarcus but, but Lawrence that, is not going but that's hard, freaking to North Carolina. But that's Carolina. hard to go horizontal because you're, yes. you're an NCAA team. That's a top whatever team it is. Well, if, if you're you take, going horizontal, you're really going backwards, right? If you're not that's improving, that's you're just took the words yeah. right out of my, out of my mouth. That, yeah, because essentially you're all you're taking a step backwards. Yeah. Because here's why I, I, and I'm with you though, Strick. Talk to is me. Is because, so Kase you know, played 85% of the time, maybe even more than that. But then you're talking about he took a high volume of the shots. It's available to you, my boy. And then, if I'm Eli Rice, I'm like, yes, my boy. Yes. I know you like me. All I got to do is get better on defense. Okay. And get the it's going to suck, but I'm going to do it. For the minutes. You used to do it for the gram. Yeah. You, used to do it, you, you, you used to do it for the TikTok. Not do it well, for the You're going to you're gonna have to get better at any something, <clears throat> at a, whatever it is that you, you need to get better at here. You're not going to get on a plane and travel to whatever school and get better instantly. Come on, somebody. Talk because to you. Me. Right? It's just, not I happen. mean, everybody faced it. I mean, we've See? all we've all had to either wait our turn or split time or split minutes it, with people that we were as good at or eventually been better at. And... Maybe somebody when we played in, in in our professionals or in our professions that they were we were now splitting time with the younger guy that they were willing to kind of work through some of the muddy waters with, and we didn't like it because we were more established and we had earned it. Maybe they don't work as hard, or maybe they're just not as good as us, but they're giving them leeway. You're you're here. Yeah. You're here in a great situation mm. to where there's so many minutes, not only this season, but then you could really cement yourself in in rice's case for year three which mm -hmm. is the most important thing mm -hmm. because unless you get a and, and, and you can't even say it's, it's a jump like hunter salas because hunter salas went through two years of the first year really not playing not this season but last year kind of was he a five point uh, mm -hmm. of a, a score a game a defensive guy but started to get some real minutes started mm -hmm. to play some pressure pack minutes he probably saw look mark few is probably going to keep me in a box but I got better at some of my week. He got better at ball handling because mm -hmm. he started to play kind of a point or point forward right. kind of like a he was, he was able to play a one, two, three small lineup four, but generally one, two, and three. But he handled the ball. That was probably right. Correct me if I'm coming out. That's, that's what he needed to get better at coming out of high school. So yep. he got better at that. He started to hit some more threes, open right. Yeah. Which you would kick kick out threes. 
And then he's always been great in transition on defense, right? Right. So that's what he can do. He can go anywhere and do that. So he's going to get minutes. Then he goes somewhere to where he can take all of those things that he had to get better at and work on. Coach, it, Grind, Green, Coach Green let you. Right. And, and then take the light leash off him, and he but, has been. But even still, right. that's a downgrade. From Gonzaga to Wake Forest. Yes! Yeah. But then he, but he. It's a downgrade for his upgrade of, of success. Right. But, but but then he also elevated them. and Wake Forest along with Right. Him, right. So now, right. so now but he But still, has, it's a downgrade. Yes, That's what is. you're going to have to do. Right. Because you. Regardless. You know, right. Because yeah. Gonzaga last year was in, what, Final Four? Or at least Elite Eight. Close. Because they got Timmy. Yeah, they right? were close. They, they were yeah. close. Right. They were. They, they were, think they were Final they're Four. National Spotlight team. Yeah. So, of course, anything is a downgrade unless it's your top 10. You know what I mean? Yeah. Top, you can even say top. Wake Forest wasn't there, but he had to go through what Eli Rice would even be going through next year. That part. And Zyga was an elite 18. Okay, elite yeah. eight, right. So you got to think, that's what he would be going through him. All these guys going. Now, if you're like CJ and maybe, and this is just my opinion, we, I do not have any information. I'm just saying for CJ, it's your last year. Maybe you want to get closer to home, and maybe you want to maybe – Go maybe go play with your brother horizontal or or lower and yeah maybe you want to play with yeah. your brother and okay with maybe getting a, the same minutes or yeah. a little bit less minutes here that's understandable right and he's been a great addition you know and he got better at some things but Jamarcus Lawrence man that's a that's a I I I I can't look and I said this I said Jay and I know you understand this that's like you showing up on campus they said you're the starting linebacker. You know it coming back, you're going to be the starting linebacker, but then you come back and you fillet the, you know, you lay, you lay the egg and you, you fry it instead of scrambling the egg. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they gave him every ability and opportunity to take the reins of the position and he didn't do it. That's not Nebraska's fault. Right. They gave you all the opportunities to right. shine. You just weren't ready for the moment. Right. Okay. Why, why, why would you want to leave that? You got an opportunity still that's there now. I mean, yeah. they, they, Especially guy's... with Ramel leaving yeah. and stuff like that. And, and, and in case they... There's really, really still no point guard. Right. You, you list, I'm, if, if I'm in practice and I, I, I know I play... I'm, this is me. Like, like I, I had to face Jason Kidd. You know, to earn oh, a spot. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm like, okay, I know you're Jason Kidd, and I know who? Cats are scared of you, but what? Who, uh, to me, you you just a regular regular yeah. cat. I've seen you before. Right. That's what I would be saying if I'm Jamarcus. Like, are you kidding me? Like, right. Euless, you have no chance against me, my boy. Like, that's how I would right. be coming back. Right, because, you know, really, no matter what, what people don't understand, um, even though Euless has been able to practice, and I don't know what the whole – sanctions or whatever the discipline is but he didn't get to play yeah so even this that alone jamar just take, ahead of just him. take him he's ahead of him You're just ahead of on him. because you played all the game right and then also you have a realistic playbook on what you need to get better at plus you're going to get more opportunities and shots that means you're going to be you're going to go up the option uh list right so they yes. say was number one rank and then Williams, and you know, and that kind of varied. And then you throw in Gary and then whoever else, right? Yeah. CJ when he was rolling. So you just are automatically down there at six or seven. And now, if you missed it this year, now you got a chance to go. Now you just automatic subtraction. You're up there here. And then once you get in the lab, right. then you take a step come forward. Come on, come on, Jay. So, I mean, it's, it's, hey, man, it's, but like, that's like you coming in as a linebacker, knowing you got the position, but you just like, well, bump the playbook. I'm just going to do my own thing. And they sit you on the side because you yeah. you weren't you weren't doing what they asked you to do, or or you didn't take the moment. You know you weren't filling the gap, right? Like or or to. or say like you had some like uh, like Ramel's the case. You just had some just inopportune time injuries. You just ain't it, weren't able to kind of get out of the neutral, you know, neutral mm -hmm. and get started. Well, then they like okay, here you go. You know his situation different. I'm talking about Jamarcus. You got playing time. You have an opportunity. Unless they told him, like, man, we ain't giving you no minutes. But the reason why I think it, that that wasn't the case is because he didn't jump in the portal right away. Mm -hmm. So that lets me know it was probably a harder decision for him. And mm -hmm. a hard, it, it, they came to an impasse. Mm -hmm. um, and nobody knows. There probably those. was some discussions. Right. right. There had to be. Yeah. And so there and was. And Jope, Jope is the other one that right. throws me for the loop. Like, if you knew Alec is gone, you Keita's gone. What other big men are here? Like, 
Bro, that's starter minutes. Like, our, like, and we need a true. Even if they bro. go to the portal, and we even if e- right, but bro, we need a know. we need a Texas A and M type of power for that's the easy that's easy minutes to get. Yeah, right, because that just comes down to physicality, want to, and effort. And you know that, Strick. You start there, you're gonna score six, eight points just, just on, on that. GP. Just yeah. on that. If yeah. you if you're eight and eight for this, a legit eight and eight. And a rim protector or an enforcer, that that clears up. I mean, you're you can get eight and eight. There's dudes that go lottery that are eight and eight. Jay, I'm watching Rink Mass as a freshman, saying to myself, "Oh, that's what they got going on. That's what they're gonna let me do. Everything I do is prepared for me to be him and better." Right, because I'm gonna be a little bit more effective off the bounce, like a Derek. I'm, I'm, I'm watching Derek Walker and, and Rink got- Mass. I right. g- I've got this. I just right. ain't home this year. Right, but I'm looking at Derek Walker and Rick Come on. Mass, and that's what I'm mm-hmm. trying to make myself into. I, I don't I don't get it. Awesome. Tricky, what a show. Man, what a great show today, guys. If y'all missed it, go check it out on wherever it is you get your podcast. It'll be up for you here shortly. Um, watch the broadcast back on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. They're all available for you. And, of course, don't go anywhere. Jay Foreman back with you on the other side for Old School. Thanks to Nebco. Thanks to SoCal Tacos. Thanks to Starter Heyman and Aloe Honda of Lincoln Hotline and Buffalo Wings and Rings. Plenty of great sponsors today. For Strick, I'm Austin. Old School, next. Nipco is hiring CDL drivers for Ready Mixed Concrete, Husker Concrete, and Beatrice Concrete. Nebco offers great pay, medical and retirement benefits, paid time off, and they pay for CDL training. Apply today and start your new career with a $2,500 hiring bonus. From Nebco's beginning in 1908, it's the employees that have formed the company's solid foundation. Start your